Many light workers, sensitives, empaths, and healers around the planet have been experiencing turbulent and chaotic times lately as energies shift through our lives at high speed. Many experiences are leaving our lives, stagnant and stuck emotions from the past and karmic energy, most of which doesn't even come from this lifetime, is coming into our field of awareness to be dealt with because we're getting ready for a new chapter and we can't move forward while we're still holding on to the energies of the past. With the emotional chaos connected with this huge shift in consciousness comes a lot of spinning mental energy as we try to understand the root cause of what's going on, but we don't have all the answers. And that brings more confusion and uncertainty, grief, insecurity, because we just don't know what's going to come. So for many people, it's not an easy time to navigate right now. So in today's video, I'm asking the tarot cards to provide some guidance for anyone who needs it by asking the question, what will help me through the chaos? As ever, choose one card intuitively of the three or just feel into all the messages to see what resonates. And don't forget to let me know in the comments if anything speaks to you today. Hi, it's Kathy here. Thanks for tuning in. I make videos on transformation, abundance, spirituality, and how we can make life easier and more enjoyable by looking at it through the lens of the tarot. If you enjoy this video, do please like and subscribe so that you get the latest content. Okay, so here we go. The first of three cards in answer to the question, what will help me through the chaos? So the first card is a three of wands, and this is a card of progress and expansion and foresight. And when asking what will help me through the chaos, it suggests that you need to take a step back from, from the chaos surrounding you and to expand your thinking and consider opening yourself up to new possibilities. The character on the card looks like he's well prepared and the three of wands is a card that emphasizes the importance of planning and preparation and also of asserting your needs so that you can get to where you want to go to and have a good experience and stay on track, which might mean taking decisive action where necessary. By taking the time to evaluate your options and set clear goals and consider the potential outcomes of your actions, you'll be much better able to navigate any chaos and be able to keep moving forward. He also looks like he's traveling light um, as he looks into the distance there. So perhaps this is a reference to him having let go of unnecessary baggage, uh, emotional, karmic, past patterns, limiting beliefs, so on. And He's already on the road rather than in preparation of going. So, uh, you know, he's he's there. He's already taken steps. He's done some of the work. He's put some of the effort in towards his goals. So now he's in this position uh, to plan for new opportunities in the future and for that next chapter of his life. Chaos is usually temporary. So this card is suggesting that you stay committed to your vision, be patient, don't get caught up in the, the bumps in the road and the small minutiae of details. By staying focused on that long-term goal and your aspirations and by persevering, you're gonna gradually move through the chaos and find stability and success. The Three of Wands message is also that it's essential to maintain a positive attitude, believe in yourself, have confidence and faith in your abilities. Trust that you have the strength and resilience to overcome the chaos and make progress and your efforts and self-assuredness will pay off in the long run. Overall, the Three of Wands is a reminder that success and progress, they take time and effort. You've got to remain focused, determined and patient as you navigate through this chaotic and uncertain period. Keep your long-term vision in mind and you'll eventually emerge stronger and more successful. So the second card is the King of Swords. The King of Swords in tarot is often associated with intellectual power and authority, logic, control, truth speaking, and clear thinking. When this card appears in response to a question about how to move through chaos, it suggests that you need to rely on your intellect and on your reason and objectivity in order to navigate this situation. 
The King of Swords encourages you to think critically and make rational decisions rather than acting impulsively and to take a step back emotionally from the chaos to get an objective view. From there, focus on finding practical solutions instead and create a plan with clear goals that are broken down into manageable tasks so that you can take them just one step at a time. This will help you to manage the overwhelm that typically comes with chaos and help you uh, keep moving forward with more ease. Like the Three of Wands, this card also suggests the importance of being assertive and decisive when dealing with the chaos. You may need to take charge and provide guidance to others around you and make difficult decisions in order to restore order and bring stability to the situation. So have confidence in yourself and in your leadership abilities embrace your own inner strength and make decisions that are fair and reasonable. The King of Swords is also associated with communication and clarity so it's important to be honest and direct when dealing with others and with yourself of course. Speak your truth with confidence and authority but also listen carefully to other people's perspectives. Lastly, this king may also represent someone other than yourself. So the message here might be to seek expert advice from someone who can help you to navigate the chaos more effectively. So what trusted mentors, advisors or professionals do you know who can provide you with the guidance based on their expertise and experience? But overall, the King of Swords advises that you need to stay calm, rational and in control of your emotions to be able to move through the chaos successfully by maintaining a clear and logical mindset and communicating effectively and taking charge of the situation when necessary. You can overcome the challenges and restore order in your life. So the last card is the Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords, it looks a little bit of an ominous card uh, and generally it's seen as a card of endings and the completion of a difficult cycle. If you intuitively chose the Ten of Swords or it resonates with you in some way, then it could indicate that you're experiencing or have experienced recently a painful or challenging situation that's led to some kind of betrayal or loss or a defeat of some kind. In the context of the question, what will help me move through the chaos, the Ten of Swords suggests that you need, first of all, to acknowledge the painful reality of your situation and accept that something has come to an end. Don't try to avoid or deny what's happened. Trying to resist or fight against the chaos usually only leads to more pain and suffering. So acceptance is the first step towards finding resolution and it can help you find a new perspective or a way forward. As you surrender fully to the situation, make sure that you let go of any fantasies or false hopes and unrealistic expectations and accept that there are things that you can't control. Holding on will perpetuate any confusion and by accepting the truth and just letting go of those illusions, you can begin to heal. It's worth remembering that this is a minor arcana card, so it signifies a temporary situation rather than a major life overhaul. And in fact, despite its dark and bleak appearance, the Ten of Swords signifies that you have reached the lowest point, so things can now only get better from here. It suggests that the chaos that you are experiencing may lead to transformation and growth and change. So See if you can embrace this as an opportunity for personal development and look for the lessons in this chaos. This card is also a reminder to prioritize self-care and healing during challenging times and to really allow yourself time to grieve or release any feelings of anger or bitterness or resentment that may be holding you back. You can do this alone through some form of creative expression or journaling thoughts and feelings or you could dance it out, or you could hit pillows and yell or cry or express it through your body and voice in some way. The main thing is to engage in activities that restore your energy and well-being, because your energy is the most important resource that you have. If it's more than you feel that you want to handle alone, then get support from loved ones or from a 
professional who can hold space for you and assist you in that healing process. If you feel that I can be of any help, then do reach out. But finally, the Ten of Swords, it really urges you to remain resilient in the face of adversity. Though it may be challenging, maintain your determination and perseverance. Remember that even after the darkest times, the sun eventually rises again. And whilst the Ten of Swords may represent an ending, it also symbolizes the potential for new beginnings. So use this chaotic period as a chance to reassess your situation, consider new paths and approaches and be open to fresh new opportunities that will arise. So that's it for today. I hope you were able to take away some positive messages and guidance to help you through what might be quite a difficult time. I think that the message from the Ten of Swords that will serve everyone is to remember that after the darkness always comes a dawn. So whatever difficult place that you find yourself in right now is temporary. Everything changes. And if you allow yourself to process all your feelings and emotions without resistance, then you will move through them with much more ease. I'm available for private sessions if you want some support to get clarity about your bigger vision, to get unstuck and to release old energies that will raise your vibration and guide you back into alignment with who you're here to be and what you're here to do. The links to my individual sessions and four week program are in the description. And don't forget, if you like to do your own tarot readings or oracle card readings or, or journaling, but your mind goes blank when it comes to thinking of what questions to ask, then check out my free guide, 111 questions for tarot, oracle cards and journal prompts. And again, the links below. So that's it from me today. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.